A number of years ago, when we established our Evidence-Based Practice Institute, we decided that it would be very useful to interact with the various stakeholders who are involved in implementing children's mental health services, and particularly those providers and individual therapists, practitioners, clinicians, coaches, all the names we provide to stakeholders, and particularly uh, families as well as the youth involved, that it'd be really worthwhile to have an interaction around some of the issues that we think are salient and important in the field of children's mental health. And the particular topic of evidence-based practices as it relates to or as it um, addresses families and youth and children who come from minority backgrounds has been a, a real topic of of conversation, at times debate, at uh, times uh, argument within the field. And the argument uh, typically revolves around the issue, a number of issues, but it really revolves around the issues. Are these evidence-based practices that have been developed? Uh, Trauma-focused cognitive behavior therapy, multi-systemic therapy, um, parent-child interaction therapy, incredible years, family integrated transitions, uh, and numbers of them that have demonstrated effectiveness, are they really that effective with minority populations? Or really have they been developed in such a way that their applicability is less effective with um, different cultures, different minority groups, different individuals from different ethnicities. So the debate in the field in many ways has, has created some challenges because those of us who are motivated and uh, as part of our mission want to see improved outcomes for youth and look at the research and say, look, the research shows that if you in fact have a child who has trauma, and you use a particular approach, trauma-focused cognitive behavior therapy, you're really going to improve the outcome for that child. But there is pushback. It goes not just with something like an individualized uh, approach around a specific issue, but it also goes for, uh, um, relates to some of the systemic interventions like multi-systemic th therapy or functional family therapy, that these interventions don't consider and are not not as focused in on issues of culture and ethnicity, and they, in fact, reduce the effectiveness with those families. So there's a debate around that issue, and there are many of us, me included, think that the, 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 the debate it needs, to, needs to move from a debate to some resolution in some way and some strategy to do problem problem solving around it so the benefits of some of these evidence-based practices can be applied more systematically in a more comprehensive manner throughout the children's mental health system. So that is essentially the question that or the issue that this particular now video blog uh, that we're initiating. Really we want to start a dialogue related, related to is there a benefit to, or is there a need to adapt these various evidence-based practices to different cultural groups? And if there is, which I think many in the field think that there's some benefit in doing some adaptation, how much of an adaptation should there be? Should the, there be a focus on specific language, how you use terms, and how that aligns with that particular cultural group, ethnic group? Should there be a focus on uh, identifying various members of a family and how a family is structured where there is more maternal and more paternal authority and how is that how is that taken into consideration um, are there are there issues that relate and could in fact impact engagement um, that uh, a modification or an adaptation uh, of the particular practice would benefit. Is there something related to the length of sessions that one has and where the sessions are, are, are uh, take place? 
So there are a number of a number of what might be thought of as more practical issues that can be looked at. But then there is a a more theoretical issue. Do is it is it is are some of these practices more beneficial in terms of clinical outcomes than what has been going on in the past in various settings, and particularly in, in settings where uh, outcomes have been often not very, n not really haven't improved the lives of children and families. There's a number of researchers who have done work uh, looking at, at these issues, and um, in about, oh, about 10 years ago, Mark Lipsy did a, an analysis of many, many of the evidence-based practices to l look at whether, in fact, there were differential, significantly different, different outcomes with uh, minority pop populations. And what he found was that there really weren't significant differences, that, that the effect size or the benefits of these interventions may have been a little less with minority families. But still, the, as compared to practice as usual, that there were uh, improved outcomes for these families. So, so again, one could look at that kind of v overview of many, many studies and say, well, you know, it's just it maybe maybe some customizing would in fact increase the uh, the effectiveness uh, uh, and you know of these uh, of these interventions. And Stan Yui recently d uh, did a, a review of uh, the literature to look at. Oh, whether there were a any real differences between um, uh, evidence-based practices in minority populations, and he, you know, essentially some of the s studies w we really didn't uh, didn't really look specifically at this I this issue, but you but you we found that that probably these in interventions, these treatment strategies, were probably efficacious with these. Uh, with these population and ethnicity was not found to be really to affect the uh, the treatment outcomes, despite this these research the, despite this research, the 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 field and practitioners are not convinced that this is so. So we'd like to get your perspective on this, and if we can inform our stakeholders around the research we'd like to be we'd like to to do that we're in the process of completing a, a, a toolkit um, for how one adapts uh, an evidence-based practice um, the specific population that we've addressed are Latino families and gotten a great deal of input from Latino families and Latino practitioners and looking at an evidence-based practice that targets youth who have co-occurring disorders who are involved in the juvenile justice system. But our toolkit is intended to give some useful strategies to how you would apply an adaptation or some, some, some reframing of an evidence-based practice to target and to include some issues that have been brought up by minority providers and minority families. So, it would be informing to us to get your perspective and uh, begin a uh, begin an interaction around this issue, and we uh, we hope you'll respond either through YouTube or you can do it by uh, directly putting a uh, putting an entry onto our blog.